Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're going to talk about the distributive property. Let's get started. Alright, let's talk a little bit about the distributive property. If you look at the word distributive, it may make you think of distribute. And if you know distribute just means to give something to everyone in a group. Uh, if you think of the SATs, when they're getting ready to start the SATs, they might say something like, now we're going to distribute the test. All that means is they're going to give the test to everyone in the group, everyone in the room. The distributive property works the same way. Instead of distributing a test, we're distributing a number. Okay. So here we have 7 times the sum of 3 and 2. Okay. I'm going to distribute the 7 to every term inside these parentheses. Okay. So that 7, I'm going to multiply by the 3. I'm also going to multiply the 7 times the 2. Okay. So, 7 times 3, I'm just going to write it like this. I'm just going to show you. 7 times 3, your operations still stay the same. You just bring them down. Plus 7 times the 2. Okay. Well, 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 7 times 2 is 14, which gives me 35. Okay. Now, you might be saying, well, Jeff, I thought if we're doing order of operations, doesn't parentheses come first? And yeah. They do. You can do the same thing. If I did parentheses first, I would get 3 plus 2 is 5, and 7 times 5 is 35. It's the same thing. Now, the reason we're talking about this distributive property right now is because we're not going to be dealing with numerical expressions very much anymore. Instead, we're going to have something like Maybe 3 plus x. Okay, You're going to have variables in there. And in this case, you think, okay, I do parentheses first, right? Well, you can't add 3 plus x because we don't know the value of x. So instead, we use the distributive property to simplify. Same thing. 7 times 3 would give me 21. 7 times x, sorry, I bring down the operation. 7 times x is 7x. I don't know what x is, so I just write 7x. Let's look at the first example. All right, example one. Use the distributive property and mental math to do 8 times 53. Now, some of you, if you can do this in your head, I'm willing to bet that you're actually using the distributive property without even knowing it. Um, the way you would do this, if you're trying to get to a point where kind of step your game up and be able to do this in your head instead of 53 times 8 and doing it like that, is we think of 53 as 50 plus 3, okay? So if you think of it as 50 plus 3, well then that allows me to do a little bit easier multiplication. So we use a distributive property, which means I'm distributing the 8 to the 50 and the 3, which means I'm multiplying 8 times 50 plus 8 times 3. Well, 8 times 50 is 400 plus 8 times 3 is 24 which and then you do 400 plus 24 is 424 okay so that's how you would use distributive property to do some things like this in your head um, 6 times 35 well you would do the same thing but see if you can do it in your head 35 is 30 and 5 6 times 30 is 180, 6 times 5 is 30, 180 plus 30 gives me 210, okay? So next time you have problems like this, see if you can do it in your head. Try to use the distributive property. Let's look at another example. Okay, example number two. Use the distributive property to do 1 half times 2 and 3 fourths. Now you might be saying, well, why would I need to use the distributive property? I thought mixed numbers, just change it to an improper fraction, and then multiply. And yes, you can do that, 
but you can also use the distributive property, and we're gonna show you how to do that. Um, the trick is, same thing in the last example, you gotta think of what two and three-fourths actually means. And two and three-fourths means two plus three-fourths. But when we write mixed numbers, we don't actually write the plus, but that's what it means. So hopefully you can see we can use the distributive property. I'm going to do one half times two plus one half times three fourths. Well, one half times two is one, half of two is one, plus one half times three fourths. Let's see, well, I still got the one plus uh, nothing to simplify, so one times three is three, two times four is eight, one plus three eighths is one and three eighths. Okay. Here's something to try on your own. All right, here are our last examples. Simplify each expression. Uh, so right here, my first one, nine times the sum of six and two X and three. Now, there's a couple ways to do this. I know we're talking about distributive properties, so you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna distribute the nine to the six, nine to the two X and nine to the three. And you can do that, and that's fine, but I don't want you to forget about order of operations, which say do parentheses first, right? PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, subtract. So parentheses, always look. Is there anything you can simplify in the parentheses first before you start to do your multiplication, before you start to distribute? And yes, I can't do six plus two X because I don't know what X is. They're not like terms. I can do six plus three though. So I'm gonna simplify inside the parentheses first. That's gonna become nine plus two X. Okay, now I'm ready to distribute. So I'm gonna distribute the nine to this nine and the nine to the two X. Always remember to make sure you distribute to every term. The most common mistake I see students make is they'll do the nine times the nine, but they'll forget to do nine times two X. If you draw those little arrows, I think it's gonna help you a lot and you won't make as many mistakes. So nine times nine gives me 81. Bring down my operation, nine times two X is 18 X, okay? I can't simplify any farther. I don't know what X is, so I can't add these together. I said before, they're not like terms, and what that means is um, like terms are things that are terms that are alike, that you can actually combine. Uh, any number, all numbers are like terms. Any numbers by themselves are like terms. But when you've got variables in there, you have to look for the same variables. So if this was 81x plus 18x, you can think of it as I have 81x's plus 18 more x's. Well, how many x's do I have now? I would have 99x's. So you could do that. We call those like terms. But because this is just 81, I can't combine them. They're not like terms, so I'm finished. That's as far as I can simplify. 7w plus 2 times in parentheses w minus 5y. Um, like I said earlier, check to see if there's anything you can do in the parentheses. I can't do w minus 5y. They're not like terms. I don't know their values, so I have to leave it. So my first step then is to distribute. 2 times w and then two times the five y, okay? So seven w, I'm not changing, that just comes down, plus two times w is two w, still have my subtraction, two times five y would give me 10 y. Now I gotta look, is there anything I can simplify? Well, like we were talking about here, these are both w, I have seven w here, seven w's and two w's, if I add those together, that would give me nine W's. They are like terms, so I can add them. Minus 10 Y, W and Y are different variables, so they're not like terms, so I am finished there.
Okay? Here's some to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.